Hi, I'm Karis Kruver. And I'm Jonathan Armstrong. This is Trending, your bi-weekly sneak peek into Bob Jones' life in the Greenville community. This week, we remember the victims of the 9-11 terrorist attack. 17 years ago this month, the United States changed as we know it, and we will never forget those who died. Grace Blair caught up with Natalie Larson to talk about the 9-11 memorial on front campus. On September 11, 2001, 3,000 people lost their lives in a terrorist attack on the United States. This week, Bob Jones University set up a memorial to remember those who have died. Natalie Larson, Student Leadership Council event coordinator, tells us about it. To get ready for it, you have to make sure you have enough flags and you have to make sure your rows are straight and other things like that. Before we came out for setup, we had rows of string on the ground that marked every foot just so volunteers who came out were able to know where to place the flags. And then we had over 100 people come and they were eager to get involved. I think one reason the student body wants to come together to remember 9-11 is also that on that day we, we had to come together as Americans, as people. And in that day, a lot of people were wondering, why did this happen? What, what happened here? Who, where is God? Who is God? And I think we can still use the platform of 9-11 to share the gospel and to, to reach out with hope. And so we have this remembrance, we have this cross, and people look to it and they said it's the cross of hope. But as Christians, we know it is the cross of hope, and we can come to it running and redeemed and forgiven and saved. And so I think that's also part of the gloriousness of this memorial, is to remember that we have the hope of, of Christ that we get to share with those who are suffering, who are hurting. And so I think that's also a great thing for the student body to remember is ordinary people can do extraordinary things because Christ is in them to allow them to do that. We would like to thank the stage crew for their work on the cross replica. If you'd like to see more about it, you can visit Bob Jones University's Instagram TV at BJUEDU. For WBJU, I'm Grace Blair. And up next, from Instagram to instant email, social media impacts our day-to-day -day life. But just how much has technology changed student life? Jonathan Armstrong was able to catch up with a couple of faculty members and see what they think about technology around campus. Over the past 20 years, communication between college students here at Bob Jones University has changed significantly. We had phones in the dorms. That's the way we communicated. But it's the mail system between the dorms was the main way to communicate across campus from the women's side to the, to the men's side. And so has the communication from the university to its students. You know, a lot of it was actually done for students was done through chapel announcements. It was more face-to-face, um, -face, large gathering kinds of, kinds of announcements. But the rise of innovations such as the cell phone and social media have made such information more accessible. In the past, we, were, we would wait hours, if not days, to get news about certain things. Students can pull their phone and look on the Canvas app and see their grades right away. And back then, sometimes you had to wait until midterm or at the end to figure out exactly where you were in class. Technology innovations have done a good job of connecting students as well. Social media allows students to stay connected with other friend groups and other networks. Distance definitely separated people you have the visual element as well, which adds a huge dimension to our ability to communicate and our ability to relate. As long as technology continues to adapt, expect campus life to adapt with it. For WBJU, I'm Jonathan Armstrong. So what did you learn from that? Well, I learned that people that went to school here back in the day used to do this thing called write notes instead <laughs> of texting. So, and also night mail, was like the biggest thing on campus. Like everyone did night mail. So yeah, now yeah. everyone just texts. Exactly, everyone just texts, and night you might see like one or two night mails a night, but it used to be like five or six, wow. like per per dorm. So you know that was pretty impressive. But there's one thing on campus that hasn't changed, and that is Society Rush. Last week was one of our favorite times of the year: Society Rush and induction. AJ Papagano takes us on an inside look into this year's festivities. Rush allows societies to showcase themselves to the newest class of freshmen in hopes of getting them to join. I talked to freshmen James Shooping and Ali Papagino to get their thoughts on choosing a society. I'm looking to find some guys who are very enjoyable, whether they're nerdy or sporty or whatever their personality may be. So something that's just medium size. Um, a society that does a lot of like fun activities and a lot of outreach. But freshmen aren't the only ones excited for Rush. 
society officers take time to plan their boots for the big exciting night and are excited to see the new freshmen. Uh, meeting all the freshmen for sure. Um, hearing all their stories where they're from, what they want to learn at college. Mm. Uh, it's really interesting to me. It's so exciting and invigorating to be part of something bigger than yourself and to work with other people as a team. It's for freshmen, I think, but I, it also serves to bring uh, the rest of the university together. Rush culminates in induction night when the freshmen gather into Alumni Stadium. There, society's names are called one by one and the freshmen follow their new society spirit leader to induction. Next year's Rush may not have a dunking tank or a 20-foot dragon, but it will have new faces and plenty of fun. For WBJU, I'm AJ Papagiano. You might have been hearing a lot about Go Greenville. WBJU was able to talk to the Center of Global Opportunities about this year's efforts to reach the community with the gospel and how you can get involved. Yes, Go Greenville is one of our major activities that we do each year, our major outreaches that we go out into the community, the greater Greenville area, and try to really reach Greenville with the gospel. Most people think Go Greenville is only on Saturdays. It is actually starts on Wednesday and there's four different categories. You can go downtown and do urban evangelism or you can do some worldview surveys with the churches here in the area that partnered with us. There's also Bible clubs where we go with different outreaches that are already going on trying to reach different neighborhoods, um, the kids in those neighborhoods with the gospel. And then there are also assisted livings where we partner with different nursing homes and go out and try to encourage the elderly. Jordan Baum shares how you can sign up for outreaches in your community. So the best place to go is www.bjucgo.com and from there it'll be real clear there's about three four different ways you can get to the sign up from there so it's pretty easy you can go to the Go Greenville page and then sign up there through the Google form um, but if you go to bjucgo.com um, you can just click through there and get your way to the sign up very easily. Stay dry this weekend as Hurricane Florence pounds South Carolina with lots of rain. And I'm going to be taking my umbrella wherever I go. Exactly. Definitely not walking out of Smith dorm without a jacket no. because we are going to get pounded this weekend, guys. But anyways, thanks for watching. For WBJU-TV, I'm Jonathan Armstrong. And I'm Karis Kruger.